Jack Tankshaw is the hottest young prospect to come out of Wales. Undefeated in 12 pro MMA bouts, Jack is an amateur champion, a former Cage Warriors champion, and is now 1-0 in the UFC. Proudly representing the Welsh flag, Jack has been tipped for big things by international pundits. Welcome to One Day with John Gooden, where we head deep into the valleys to spend the day with Jack and his team. UFC's Jack Shaw. <laughs> Come on in. How are you, mate? All right. Are we wet? I'm a little wet. <laughs> yeah, typical Welsh weather, right? Yeah. Wettest part of the country in the world, <laughs> probably. Shoes off here, I take it. Yeah, come on. My mum will go mad, her voice. 2012, we moved here, and uh, we lived just down the road, down towards um, the bottom end of Six Bells in that area. So right. we did. We grew up there, and then we've been here the last seven years. So I suppose from from 18 or 17, I think I was onwards. I've this is the a spot. Teenage up to a man here, and, <laughs> and grew up in the other house. <laughs> yeah, and what's so? What's the name of your town, and and like? What's this place like? Because you know, it, <laughs> it looks. That's I'm, a question. You know, it, it, for me, I can see like this is the valleys, right? Because yeah. I look out the window and all I can see is just trees going up into the sky. Um, and when we're on high, it doesn't look like a big place. No, it is. So we're in Abbot Leary. So there's different sectors to Abbot Leary. This sector is Six Bells. So I've, I've grown up in Six Bells. It's not very big. It's, you could probably get from, from one end to the other of Apleary in five minutes just driving. Right. I, I don't know what the population is, there's not many. There's if I walk through the middle of town now I probably know nine out of ten people and right. you know, personally. So it's a small town. It's um it's a tight tight knit community as well. Like uh, everyone knows everyone. Yeah. Everyone sort of supports everyone is it, it's just um it's is it like to to people living in a city I suppose it would be it's a mad little concept for them to take on because you know, people, even in Cardiff then, which is now one of the biggest cities in the UK, it's like, yeah. you could walk down the street in Cardiff, I imagine, if you live there, you probably wouldn't see anyone you know some days. With yeah. you, there's no way I could leave the house now, walk to the town centre and, and not see someone that I know. Yeah. And obviously, the it's a, it's a nice little place to live. It's basically on the side of a mountain, I think. They right. Just, they just suggest, well, let's just chuck a town in the middle of, that, <laughs> middle of them two mountains and then crack on with it. But, um, yeah, it's, I love it, yeah, I wouldn't... I don't think I would ever leave, to be honest. I'm, really? I, no, I, I'm, a, I'm a valley boy, <laughs> born and bred, so it, it sounds cliche, but nah, that's I've cool. grown up here and, and I, you know, I've always said it. I may travel the train now and then and, and you know, I, I know I did a month out in America, stuff like that, but I would never move away from here. This is, this is my town, I suppose, yeah. and uh, I, I just love living here, love the people here, love the the community, the, the atmosphere, you know, it's yeah. every, like nine out of ten people want, want it to do well, you know. We'll show you the um, the oil painting first. It's uh, this was got for me off um, off my mate Lee. So let me turn the light on. Lee's that sponsors me. He's uh, he's a good friend, and this is done by Pat Killingham, who's um, I think Dana White has bought pictures off him. Uh, Floyd Mayweather. If you, if you type him in on Google, he, he's done thousands. Or Anthony Joshua has, has and actually now he's and him. now Jack Shaw and, and enters that trust, as well. Yeah, Batch of all people, Batch he knows everyone, and Batch is good friends with him. So uh, we got a we got a personal piece on the wall. And, that's um, amazing. Some you know that's something money can't buy. I suppose. Yeah. We we'll have our whole life now. My old man loves it. He saw his yard. He said that's going straight at the end of the table. Ooh, so uh, that's incredible. He's, uh, He'll probably take that to the grave in my imagination. He'd be buried with it. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what does that mean to you? Because I've, I've always wondered how fighters that go from, you know, their gym and just working really hard to a point where people around the world are drawing pictures of you. They're not just what some people, they want to come and take a photo. And I think that's very common now. But to actually sit down and like, with their own impression of, of who you are, they'll, they'll use their creativity. I mean, what does that mean? Like, when I sit down and think about it, like, like when you hear someone put it like that, and it, it, it is a bit surreal, it doesn't, it almost feels like it's not true. But it's, it's a bit, like I said, it just takes you back a bit. You think, like, me, like, you know, I in my head, I'm still just Jack from Up the Leary. So to think, you know, when you say there's someone who's, doing pictures of Anthony Joshua and Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor and they're buying them off and I go, 
one of them sat on the wall. But it's even not just you know walking down the street and people like can I have a photo or mm. oh Jack how's he going good luck this and that. It's like I try not to let it. I don't I try not to think about it too much because yeah. when I sit down and think about it, is it freaks you out a little bit because you you don't I don't think of myself as someone that that people know or you know I go. Uh, people tagging me in pictures online of their kids in, in Jack Shaw t-shirts and it's like, oh, he wants to come training and he, he'd like to meet you for a photo, can you have your autograph? And it's like, it's nuts to me to think, like, I still think as myself as a, as a young a young kid, like, you yeah, know, so I'm yeah. like, young kid just training and living the dream. I don't ever lay, I don't ever think about that part of it too much, but then when I sit down and think about it, it sets in a bit then, it's like, right, yeah. we've come a long way and yeah. we're not, you know, hopefully we're not, we're not even close to where we want to be yet. So yeah. I, I, I sometimes I think, like, imagine what it could be like, or what it's going to be like compared to what it is. Like, if I go back two years ago now, no one really knew I was two or three years ago. I, I was there was a novice pro, but then two years on now, and it's like this. And I think, well, where will it be in another three years' time, or yeah. another five years' time, or ten Exciting. years' time? It's, uh, it's a bit surreal. For people that haven't maybe followed your journey. From, from what I'm seeing here, there's maybe four or five storylines in this, which the artist has really captured. So, I mean, what, what I can pick out of this, and just please add some layers to it, but that's your dad who's embracing you in yeah. the back there. He's obviously a big part of your journey, your head coach. Um, you won the Cage Warriors title, which is a, a very prestigious title uh, to be around your waist. You've got the flag there, but then the flames. <laughs> and I love that because that's not... That's something external to you as well. So tell us what the flames are and what that is symbolic of. Well, if, I mean, you could probably look at it as two things. Obviously, the you've got the Welsh dragon. Yeah. You know, the, the dragon roll. There you go. Hadn't right. have thought so, of that. So you've, so. Got, you've got the flames there. But also, it's the, it's, it's the Jack Shaw on fire movement. I think that's where the, the thought behind it came from. Obviously, that started um, three years ago. I think it was, um, it was the Euro 2016. Uh, Wales done really well. It was, it was the one where Wales pushed far, far than they ever have, and um, there was uh, Will Griggs on fire. So I, I had a fight booked, um, and a couple of boys were due to go to a wedding, so they couldn't come. So they they uh, chinned the wedding off anyway the day before. And they said we're not going to the wedding. We're coming. We've got any tickets. So I said yeah. So they so they met, met me outside with it, and uh, they had um, had that song on free from the sign. I thought, really? Not too much, but no. <laughs> so I got, there's a car full on, they start singing the, the Jacks was on fire song. I was like, we just thought this in the car, we're going to sing it Saturday. So I said, oh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and then um, a couple of I won the fight, went on holidays, and um, I think six boys added Jacks was on fire tattooed on them. They were singing it in the pool. No the way. There's a video on my Facebook that had a couple hundred thousand views, people singing it. Um, and then when I got home, then my next fight, it just blew up even more. So they were Jacks on fire t shirts. I think another. Like 10, 15 people have got the tattoo now. I think we're up to 25 people have got, got Jack Shaw's on fire tattoo. <laughs> That's when brilliant. I, one of the guys, um, Chris Lane, who I've known all my life, Chris trained with him from a young age. Um, he's got, he, he messaged me yesterday, he's off for a tattoo today, and he said if he's got a spare 20 minutes at the end, he's going to he's gonna jump on the back wagon as well. So I think that's where the, the thought of the fire is. Obviously, a lot of people, especially in the UK, you know, when you think of Jack Shaw, you think, oh, Jack Shaw's on fire, especially yeah. with the, the documentary and everything. So, yeah. It was a nice little touch um, that, that you put out in the background as well. Yeah, love it. Love it. So here we go. I can, my attention immediately... Straight away. <laughs> yeah. That's a, a replica, actually, that is. Because uh, obviously they had the belt back for the for the tournament. So that's, uh, that's our prized possession. And that's behind is the frame there. Um, from the... Uh, from, that, from the fight that we won it with. Amazing. So you get the... Rep so where's the real belt? They got it back. They got it back? Yeah, they got it back. A little, uh, let's hear some of the... That's the Yang Maps. That's the Yang Maps, yeah. Let's get that down. European that was the... Um, champion from the UK, wasn't he? The Euro, that was the first ever Euros. First ever I Matthew. And was this probably the, the most significant um, award that you'd won by that point? Yeah. So probably right up until that. So this was the first... Yeah, this week. was four fights in three days. Yeah. Um, I had to make weight every day. Right. Which, uh, get, uh, like, at amateur, I was fighting at light weight anyway. Yeah, so, so you just keep your... Like, you can see the weights on there, like 152, 152, 151. I'll so, say you're under. So I was well under. Yeah. Um, I was giving a lot of size up when I every, every every fight. So. Right. But, yeah, this was um, this was the prized one for, for a long time. Yeah. First first ever Europeans. It was the... I might have only been running a year at the time, I think. So yeah. it was a big one. I think I was the only... Well, I was... 
Lonely Wild. No, Edom was in there as well, wasn't he? It was, it was two, uh, two Welsh boys in there because it wasn't no Team Wales at the time. Right. It was Team UK. Right. <clears throat> and um, it was me and Aidan James. And um, fortunately, I got the job. I think it was three first round submissions and one decision. So that, that's, that's a this is what, uh, yeah, definitely. Three, three days to make. The, the, the pattern was we got there, we made weight on the first day, wrapped up. And then now we first did the fight, they said there's no fight. So we had to deal with that on the first day. Right. Right. Go back to the hotel. That's knocked him south because he prepped for a fight. Yeah. Get up at 6 a.m., drive to the weigh-ins, weigh in, go back to the hotel, have breakfast, go back to the venue, fight, go back to the hotel, have something light to eat, go back to bed, get up the next morning, drive to the weigh-in. And <laughs> that was four, day, four days in a row. Oof. And four, two fights in your first day, then two following days of fight the day up until the, yeah. the final. It's a long, uh, long, a long couple long, of days. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a really <clears> tough. And we had to, we had to make weight as well. The day that so the tournament started on the Thursday, we had to make weight on the Wednesday as well. We had to be about two pound of yeah. weight to, to check in. Otherwise, they wouldn't yeah. have fight. So. so make weight Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday. I know su Sunday we fought. So Sunday. Yeah, because you didn't fight on the Thursday. Yeah, so I made so weight Friday, Wednesday, Saturday, but I made weight Friday, Thursday, Saturday, Thursday yeah. as well because so, uh, we thought we was fighting. So made weight five, days, five days, days in a row. Right. Yeah. So, Unreal. Uh, but what a learning experience. Yeah, it, it, the building, I it said, definitely is, um, perhaps you know, it, be tough. it prepared us for, for for pro, definitely. Like it, like after winning I was no doubt then was it that, that we was ready to go. And yeah. you don't know who you're fighting each day, so you can't even prepare, you can't look <laughs> yeah. at the video and what I like, turn it up blind and like yeah. figure that puzzle out. What I liked about it as well was you couldn't like because a lot of people pad their records, especially at amateur. Hmm. You see it even now, then you see these these boys fighting out at gyms and they fight the they eight and oh nine and they're fighting guys that, that shouldn't be in New Zealand. So hmm. with with this it's like there's, si there's 16 of you, top boys, in the tournament, yeah. and you'll fight all you're told, so you don't pick and choose, yeah. and eventually through a tournament set, and you're going to have to fight, the more fights you have, the it's better the, the boys the are you're going to fight. It's yeah. the Amateur yeah. Olympics yeah. of yeah. Mixed Martial Arts, so that, and it's what an honour it must have been to have been part of that <coughs> set up anyway, to yeah. be recognised at that level, and to go on and win it. Is... Well, it was our first experience with like cameras and fight pass, and it yeah. was a 32 foot, like, we, like I was used to small cages then, so it was yeah. a 32 foot cage. Uh, the first time on fight, like fight pass was here interviewing yeah. me, and so when you said that at the time, in and relative terms, it's as big as anything that yeah. you would have done. Yeah, so, drug yeah. tested yeah. as well. Drug tested. Drug tested. Right. Uh, you, started, you started pulling up after the final, yeah. All yeah. the winners, weren't it? All, All the winners, winners go, go, go at the drug test. The right. New side of system. Good. Culturally, it's a really good thing to be getting into early on. I mean, it's a, a lot of pressure. But I would prepares you, as you say. I mean, no, it's tough. It's tough and nowadays to like it's not as practical because they obviously having tournaments in like Bahrain and yeah. Russia. So it's co world. cost wise it's tough it's tough. I we was like it was in Birmingham, so yeah. It was it was cheap. Like you said, it is like the Olympics, you mm. know, the Olympic boxing setup's the same. You can fight probably Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. For, that's your four fights. Yeah. So it's it's similar to that. It's, mm. um I, w I would say it's, it's as tough as anything you're going to do, you know. Yeah. At pro, you're never going to really have... To, you do see it where people fight twice in one night, but you're never going to have to fight four times in four days at, yeah. as a pro. So yeah, it's um, it's a big ask. Like, yeah. So it was something I was proud, yeah. proud of. It was especially at tw 20, 20 or 21, I think it was 20 when I won yeah. it. So to do it so young as well, Yeah. it was uh, it was a bit of a realisation. Like, right, let's... Uh, you know, you belo you know, it's like at that age, you sort of, you don't know if you... If you belong there, or if yeah. if if you the coaches are just telling you the you know yeah, bigging yeah, you up because yeah, yeah. you're not young, you you you're just do what you just out. do what they say. So it's yeah. a it's a good way of finding out and uh, proving to yourself and everyone else. That's what I found. You know, a lot of people were eye on me, I suppose, but I proved to myself as well. Well, you know, you must be good because you've just took yeah. up the four four top boys. So yeah. Well, we, well, here's the gloves in there actually. Ooh. There's the green old gloves. I've never used them. Warm in the final and uh, chuck them straight in the there. trophy cabinet. So more titles as well. This was. This was Pain Pits or with uh, Cage Warriors Wales now. Yeah. That was that's our fight. Mike, I was four and zero. Fought um, Mike Figlat, who's seven and zero. I think he's three and zero pro now, so he's still right. still about to beat yeah. him on decision. Um, what are we going yeah. Hand wraps. So my last fight. So the debut hand wraps. Yeah. The rest of it's being framed. The the gloves and shorts are, are down being framed, similar to that one. How important is it for you to have these? These mementos, the little things like that, even down to the hand wraps yeah, and like, the gloves. At the minute, obviously, it doesn't. At the minute, I'm still doing it, so it doesn't mean. Probably doesn't mean as much to me now as it will do in 20 years' time. But you recognise it. I can rec nice yeah, exactly. It's nice. Like I, like I always think, from every fight, keep something because 
when I when it's all done and, and I'm retired or you know yeah. if I have kids grandkids whatever that there's something they like you know years ago I don't think my old man got anything he's got one belt I think that he right. kept from his face I don't <laughs> think he kept anything so it's nice to have this so in years to come I can look back and say you know you didn't do bad like you know my belts like my jiu jitsu yeah, belts I just saw them. like yeah. white the white blue purple and brown belt now like they don't mean a lot to a lot of people you know it's just a yeah. it's, like, it's like a karate belt I suppose you you. To me, you just won the black belt eventually. Yeah, that's the one you wear for life. But to, to, to keep them, there's a lot of hours and a lot of yeah. years going into these British Nogi titles, British Gi titles. I think that that silver trophy there is from my first ever amateur fight. Um, MMA? MMA, yeah. Okay. What was I say on it? Yeah, Ultimate Impact, my first ever amateur fight. Can I see some boxing stuff down there as well? Uh, yeah, this is... Let me move these out. What's this say? So that's my second ever... Amateur boxing fight, right? That I had, um, that I won, and I think that I was fighter of the year at Come Calm Boxing Club when I was doing that. Right. That's another ultimate impact, and that's um, when I boxed out in Sweden. I boxed. Um, it was only my me and Marshall went out there, so it was like a Welsh select team, and uh, I was I had had three fights. I won the Welsh novices, a Welsh novice vest, the downstairs went to be framed as well. Right. <laughs> um, but um, me and Marshall went over, it was, like, it was us and a lot of guys from Chaps, so we fought the Swedish team over there. So um, I didn't win that one, it was a close fight. You know what boxing's like, but um, right. we, uh, Marshman, Marshman, <laughs> what are you Marshman, saying? Marshman, Marshman had a, same, a similar result as well. Right, but, uh, okay. but yeah, it was good, ex- you know, at 18, it was a good experience yeah, of going away and fighting. It's an um, experience. It's just, it, it, just like looking back, all things like that, like travelling, travelling there and fighting in Sweden. and. Yeah. It's probably all helped me in the long run. Like you don't think about it so much now, but it's, it's all it's all, isn't it's, it? all it's all in there. it's all yeah. prep for for what I'm doing now. Like yeah. going to Copenhagen two weeks ago, like that I've done it before. You know, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't um, a big deal to to travel away then for mm. the weekend fight. It was it was just something I've been doing now. I was, you know, same with the people that say, how do you deal with all the cameras and stuff? It's like yeah. I just I'm used to it now. Yeah. It's, it's it's programmed. Yeah, this is a scrapbook someone made for me. I'm like here's what are his fights. Who made this? Uh, my girlfriend helped me make this. Me and my oh. girlfriend did it. Zero idea, but I uh, I put it into practice. <laughs> so I'm OCD. And looking around, there's other stuff outside <laughs> of uh, fighting. You've got a lot of Gallagher stuff. Oh, let me it. tell you. Let me show you my collection here. Yeah. I'm a fanboy. I'm a little I fanboy. See this. Gallagher. I'm an Oasis fanboy. Oasis. I love it because Oasis. how old would you have been when Oasis were popping? Because Oasis. they were like around my time. Well. This is the first ever record I bought. Was it really? Yeah, and I was one years old when this came out. Oh, you've made me just feel so old. One years old. This was ni- that was ninety six, so I was born ninety five. Yeah, ninety six. I think I just finished school. Well, my my old my old man's to blame for all that because like, I was a fan of my fake without even realizing it because I was never like until like sort of the last five years I've never a massive Oasis fan yet. A song right. a song had come on. And I know all the words of the song. And I think, well, I don't really. I don't even know the name of the song, so I know all the words. And then it's like, I'm thinking back, it's being in the car with him and him blasting it yeah. out. And he was a, he was a little, um, he was on the decks back in his day. Shakes was, no, he was he yeah, wasn't. he was, he was, was a little, he, really? he was a pub DJ around here. That's so brilliant. he's, uh, he's big into his music. So um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Gallagher fanboy, put it that way. Nice. And um, before we leave it, what else have we got here? I see, just see the. Just some little pictures. Um. Oh, no. oh yeah. I'm glad that you got some of your missus. <laughs> she won't be happy with well. that. She won't be happy with that. You know, little corner of everything yeah. there. She got a little corner by the AKs. <laughs> Have you guys been together long? Uh, two and a half years now. Oh, nice. Two and a half years, yeah. So she met you as a. Fo- she, well, I was going to say she would have had to have met you knee high. I, don't know, <laughs> I know, she? yeah. She, she, I met Katie um, just as I was sort of booming up a bit in cage drawers. I was sort of right. five and all. I won, I won my knockout and then it was the following year then when I fought Vaughn Lee and fought for the belt and everything that they um started they started to give me that push then. So right. she had to deal with all the uh all the interviews and, uh, and Did you did you kinda of meet her with... through the sport at all? No, or no, it... it's um she's just a local girl. it's a funny I tell a funny story, it's, um I've known her dad longer than I've known her because her dad is, is a is a good grappler, a good jiu jitsu guy oh, and right. he trained at a different he, he's trained up with us now, so there's two sets of father and son in the gym, and it's me and my old man, and it's my father-in-law, my brother-in-law. No way. Yeah. So you train so, with your brother-in-law. Yeah. So he's 14. <laughs> he's a young gun coming up as well, and then and then her dad uh, dies a good grappler as well. So he's purple belt. So he's uh, he, he gives me a tough time now and as well. Right. But yeah, we've um, two and a half years now. She's uh, she's got his gold. Always uh, she puts up with a lot of shit. You know, it's like when you're cutting weight and the weight training and everything. She. Uh, 
she deals with a lot of uh, a lot of attitude from me. I expect yeah. women close into the fight, but she she takes it in this stride. She supports me all the way. See, I got good good support unit, you know, you know, between my sister, my mother, my father, my, yeah. my girlfriend, and her family, my family, and all my friends. Like, I don't see my friends from one week to, to yeah. the next. You know, I sometimes I go six, seven weeks without seeing them, but they mm. they all know there's a reason behind it, and they still they support me every fight, and yeah. they still get behind me. You know, like. When I fought last week, I think two hundred of them came over to watch in wow. Copenhagen. So that's a good crowd. It's uh, it's not a bad crowd for someone yeah. who's debuting, you know, and, and yeah. fighting in a different country. So we'll see where it goes next couple of years. I suppose um, if they they want me to fight more local, like London or even a Welsh card, then you'll see a you'll see a, a real crowd then. But yeah. uh, it was just a taste in Copenhagen. How's your message when you're fighting? Because you're super laid back. Yeah. And we'll talk about your debut at some point today. But one one of the things that blew me away was just how much you you don't really seem to no, show nerves yeah. at any point. She um, she comes to watch like you know my sister come and watch every fight since I've been to get but since we've been together like my sister always watched my fights okay. so they they come together and to be honest I don't I don't think she enjoys it I think she's right. a bag of nerves but uh, when I. I fought in Belgium um, with Cage Warriors after we first got together and she she didn't come over and she said she won't miss a fight again, she said, because she felt less in control when right. she was watching it on the okay. telly. She said she she feels more in control when she's uh, when she's there. I don't know why I don't know yeah. why because in reality she's not, but uh, well, she said she she likes to be there just to, I suppose just to check I'm alright you know, if anything yeah. did happen. She yeah. preferred to see yeah. see it you know, in person than than and on the camera, but yeah, uh, she's a bad one. My mother, my mother's even worse. She won't. She never watched a fight live ever. Really? She never will. I don't think she. Um, she'll watch it afterwards when she knows the result. Yeah. But she's never, never watched me or my old man grapple or box or, Any of that. or do, never once. She oh, hates it. Nice. For years, she used to say to me, "You'll never fight in the cage." That's what she used to say to me. Really? Yeah. You ain't fighting in the cage. I know how to fight in the cage. She used to hate the thought of it. You know, bag of nerves. But uh, she, when she, did that? When did that change? This <sighs> is when I started fighting. I think. Oh, really? <laughs> as soon as I just booked the okay. fight, and she just ex she just accepted advice. it then. But um, she hates it. Like, she, not doesn't hate the sport, but she hates me fighting. She's right. she's bless her. She's terrible. It is it is tough. But um, I think my sister hands it a bit better than all. I think she she, right. she she's like one of the boys there. She is. She's uh, screaming and shouting. But uh, well, a uh, little embarrassing story for you. So the little fight experience I've got. My second ever novice uh, boxing match my mum came along <laughs> she hyperventilated whilst i was fighting Did and the medics <laughs> were with her whilst boxers were being like meant to be seen to they were with my mum because she looked stiffened up and was hyperventilating on the side like, yeah maybe it's, it's gotta be tough for you it's gotta be tough watch it like um when i fought for the first time in the ice arena my my two cousins and their partners came and like they never watched me fight live before and uh, my one cousin Joe, when I when I was growing up, uh, <laughs> me and him were really close. Like he was like an older brother sort of thing. <laughs> and uh, I seen him after the fight after I won, and I never seen him look so well in his life. He was white. <laughs> I said, are "You alright?" He's like, "You alright?" I said, "You alright? You look terrible." <laughs> he, he was he was white as a ghost. He just looked he just looked like he just like he was in state of shock. I think. Yeah. But uh, it, it is tough. Like like I just say, you know. Watch when I used to as a kid. I used to watch my old man grapple. Like I didn't used to mind, but then as I got older and was competing myself, even when he was grappling, I used to feel myself getting nervous yeah. for him. And then even watching the boys compete, like I'd, a lot of the boys at the gym are more more like family than than training partners. So mm. I get more nervous. Like you said, I'm relaxed on fight. You know, fight night, fight week. I, it doesn't get to me. But when I watch them fight, I'm a bag of nerves. You know, I'm yeah. no good to be. That's why I just Smash. I leave them just to get on with themselves. Because if I'm around them, I know I'm going to make them more nervous. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel a pressure worse for, for everyone else than I do yeah. for myself. Yeah, bless you. This is Six Bells, so Ap Leary's just up there, the main part, keep going straight. Um, Ap Leary's just up there. It's funny, I'm now thinking about, this in is commentary, a... how I used to go at Abba Tuleri. <laughs> and it's... Tuleri. Yeah, it's just so wrong. <laughs> Who was it? Um, Abba Tuleri, they used to call it. Who was the guy, Joe Martinez? Oh, was it Abba Tuleri? He used to call it Abba Tuleri. <clears throat> yeah. Abba Tuleri, like as if it's the name. Abitillary. Yeah. But you say even like it even just, worse. It just rolls <laughs> off the tongue. I'll have to try and remember that for the next time. Yeah. But this is six bells and then you've got um Brunifoil, which is a bit further down the landing off and that's all part of it as well. But um, Did you go to school around these parts as well? I went to school, the the comp the secondary school is up further the other way in the middle of town. Okay. Um just up past the middle of town, sorry. That was uh, the set. So you wanna go right with that silver car's just on me. But what were you like at school? I was quiet in school. I was uh, well behaved, I think, compared to some of my friends who were uh, <laughs> menaces. But I, 
My mother was uh, wouldn't let me get caught up in all. <laughs> she was on my case. But no, I was quiet in school. St like, still got the same, still bothered with the same group of boys now that I've, that I've gone through through school with from like ten years of age. So, like, that's why they all um, were all so tight knit, and they all they go to the end of the year to support me. I think because they've right. known, us, known us for so long. That's very cool. Were you quite academic? Did you? Yeah, I done well. I, I went. I had twelve GCSEs. All oh, right. Uh, I that's got. A lot. Uh, up there, yeah, sorry. I had a BTEC diploma then in college, level three, and then I had my degree, um, uh, left, don't you? I had my degree then, I didn't have my degree, I graduated in 2016. What did you do? Uh, psychology. Oh, really? Yeah, psychology and criminology. Why did you choose that? Uh, I don't really know if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it seemed like at the time, um, I don't know, I don't think I'm a car park in here, is it? Was it for, I don't know, spaces, is it? Yeah, spaces. We um, well, I've just come out of college, and I thought I was I wanted to go into working in the prison service. And, oh uh, really? So I thought about going into that, but within about a year in, I decided oh, I wanted to finish a year in. But um, what what was what about the prison service? Did you think you were going to be able to? I wanted to be like a sort of like a prison psychologist. Right. Um, okay. Because I've always wanted uh, to work with. With, that sounds um, crazy, by I know. the way, to be working with people that are clearly, you know, troubled. <laughs> but um, to be honest, about a year into my degree, I wanted to finish, I just wasn't enjoying it. Um, and my father said to me, look, finish, get your degree, he said, and, I'll, and, and we'll, I'll keep you to train for, for two years, he said, full time. He said, um, but you've got to get your degree, he said, because if something goes wrong with a the fight, then or you decide you're into it, or you need something to fall back on. So yeah. once I got my degree then, that was 2016. Uh, he let me train full time for two years. Right. Then also I was, I was on the ver I was having to do a main event fight then in Cage Warriors. So I said, we'll uh, we'll extend the two year period of it. Were you able to concentrate on your studies? You obviously had ambitions of fighting as well. So how difficult was it? Was, it? it was tough because obviously in my head I just wanted to to train and fight. I had a little yeah. part time job as well, and I I was just happy earning a bit of money doing that and yeah. and just training where I could and, and as often as I could. So it was tough. To be honest, if I. If I'd focused on the degree a bit more, I probably could would have done a little bit better than what I'd done. But I mean, at the time, all, all I was thinking, I had just gone pro in um, my last year of uni, so I was mm. just thinking about. I just wanted to, you know, in my it's head, cage warriors. I guess you're backup, isn't it? Well, Would it is, yeah. Right. So, I mean, in my, that's all it was. I, I think it was a it was a backup. It wasn't like, um, you know, it wasn't my my main priority. Where I'd think right, let's get this degree. You know, you can fight on the side, and then if the fighting takes yeah. off, it takes off. It was always yeah. a matter of, you know, we're banking on the fighting taking off, and this is just a backup for a worst case scenario. So, right. I probably had my priorities the wrong way around. Well, wow. What the average person would have them, but it, it paid off in the long run. You guys way. aren't average, though. No, that's, that's the it. Difference. I always say that I think um, you gotta be a little bit, uh, a little bit nuts to to do this, <laughs> to do the sport and enjoy it. So uh, it's probably a little bit of that creep. But <laughs> I do seem normal to most people. Is uh, you gotta have a little bit of. Uh, craziness in it to, to want to pursue this as a job. We're in Six Bells Pit, or Six Bells Mine. Um, there was a, I think there was a disaster, there was like an explosion like 60, 70 years ago, and it killed something like 200 people. So Jesus. there's a big memorial, um, there's a big statue of a miner called the, Gu the Guardian of the Valleys, I think it's called, and they built them in 2011. Um, and you'll see it now, you, pretty, the, you know the Angel of the North? Yeah. And the same guy who designed that designed this. So okay. it's, uh, Again, that's a, considering we're such a small town, yeah. to have big. people compare that to, to something that's so you know famous iconic like that and iconic, North, then yeah. uh, then you know for, for someone for a little town like Abbey, yeah. it's not bad. So yeah. we'll uh, they've changed all the path though, so we might have to do a bit of trial and error now to get up there because uh, they've, they've built a new school. <laughs> but yeah, so the, I don't assume you know the bottom of my street. There was an old school on the right. And um, that's where my mother used to work. I know she's, she's working in here now. It's a big super school, ain't they call it? That looks like the uh, the emblem that they've got down at Gunnar Nelson's gym. Yeah, it does a little bit, like, doesn't it? Like the Viking. They pro maybe they copied it. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe they copied up Larry Learn. They, the community. they got them. They were checking out Jack Shaw MMA, and they came across Gunnar Nelson. <laughs> and they saw we'll oh, I like that. that. <laughs> here we go, you can see him just up there. Oh yeah. It must be such a different way of life out, out here in Wales to like the big cities of yeah, all around the world. It's complete, like when, when I go away for, for fights or go on holiday, stuff like that. Like I went to Amsterdam last Christmas, I told you, and um, like, you know, just the, the way people are out there, it's just like, 
they to fry me sometimes. I think everyone's in such a rush and everyone's so tight knit together. You know, you, you, you woke up, you know, we probably won't see no, no one. Yeah. It would be sunny, you'll see about five people. So it's, it's just, yeah. I think it's more chilled here. More, maybe that's why I'm like I am. So I've grown up here, yeah. and now in there. It's not a stressful environment to be in. Have you done much travel? Yeah, just just bits and bobs for holidays and stuff like that. Um, I went to America for a month to Jackson Wink. Okay. Uh, me and Marshman went out um, train day in Albuquerque. That was a good experience. Yeah, it was a good experience. Really good. Like cheering a mat with. Like I didn't get a spa with John, obviously, but um, Marshman sparred John Jones and Cowboy. I got a spa with uh, Diego Sanchez. John Donaldson. How was how was Diego? Oh, he's a lunatic. He's a lunatic. <laughs> I love it. Trying to kill him, literally trying to, try to kill him every round. Really? Yeah, but oh, I mean, you know, you speak, to him, you speak to him after sparring, and he's a lovely guy. Like, he's, you know, he'll chat to you. He's not, considering how, how big he is, I suppose, yeah. he, he's not, um, he's not like that, but when you're in him sparring, he's trying, to, he's, trying, he's trying to murder you. There's some interesting characters there, because even John Dodson, I've, I've had the pleasure of commentating one of his fights, so I got to speak to him before, and he's just a ball of. A ball of positive energy. Ball of energy, yeah. Um, even you know, fight-wise, but also outside, he's a you know, he's a, a small guy, but yeah. a larger-than-life character. Holly Holm was here as well. Uh, again, oh, I can't go how big she was. She, like she for a bantamweight, I know she fights at once. She's bigger than me, and she's really? ripped to the bone, ripped yeah. to the bone, and so like athletic. Yeah, she's so professional. Uh, the way that she has approached her athletic career. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't. She's a lot of people don't know her. She was like, I think she was multiple time world boxer. Oh, she's a, as well. I think she's a hall of famer, right? Yeah, in boxing. Yeah. yeah, I think she's the most decorated female boxer there's ever been, title wise. We so. we've got short memories in MMA. Yeah, I think, and yeah, a lot of people have achieved a, a great deal. I mean, okay, I'm not saying you're a boxing hall of famer, but you've done a fair bit on your path to even get to the UFC. But yeah, sharing the mat with those. Uh, those men and women must have been. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially at that time of your career as yeah, well. Yeah, well, I was I was five and zero at the time, obviously. So it was a good. What what, what I took from it a lot of as well is it, it's a good it's good to see where your levels at. Because obviously out there, if you want to spar elite wrestlers, then there's there's ten of them on the mat. If you want to spar black belts, yeah, there's a, there's there's a handful of them. You know, if you want to spar elite strikers, there's a lot of them there as well. Yeah. So wherever you're looking to test yourself in, there's. There's not so much like a, a massive jump in quality compared to over here, but there's a big jump in quantity. So, okay. whereas we might have 40 at the session, they might have 70. So yes. Yeah. There's plenty of guys there. If you, you know, if you've got a fight coming up and you want a game plan for a certain style, there'll be plenty yeah. there to to, um, to suit your to, to suit your opponent's style. Yeah, he's a he's a big guy. Hopefully, they I said they might take him down one day for a statue me up here. <laughs> couple of, couple of years I now. I won there. If I win a UFC belt. That's, that's what I'll be saying. I want something like that. Yeah. In the middle of town, or for everyone to see. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, you really don't strike me as that sort of person at all. <laughs> but the fact that you just said that, I think, is brilliant. <laughs> I'd love it. But they'd need the flames under your feet as well. Yeah, they need. We need do the flames. Need some um, some pyro up there, don't we? Some yeah. flames and some fireworks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So yeah, a mining community. It's all starting to make sense now. Hard men, yeah, hard yeah. men and women, you know, to, to cope with everything from a community like this. They had it. They had it a bit tougher than I saw in the years ago. I couldn't. I can't see me. I couldn't see me working in a mine. I don't. Don't think I got an hard day's yeah, work in me. <laughs> Unless it involves sparring or running. I don't think well, I got it in me. Some might say that's a, that's a pretty damn hard way to uh, <laughs> spend your nine to five as well. But yeah, they uh, they were tough people, weren't they? Yeah. Coming up, you know. Yeah. Not, not an easy life for it. No. You used to see a lot of older guys now. I used to work in a bar about 17, 16, and there's a, lot, there's a couple of older guys there who were ex miners, and you can right. see they, they're tough men. Like they, they've had it hard. Sometimes Wales is a little bit forgotten about, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. So for me to, to represent Wales, um, which is a small country when you look at it on a grander scheme yeah. compared to Russia and yeah. America and Brazil, so to represent Wales on, on a world stage or just rep wherever to represent Wales in, in the ice arena in Cardiff, you know, to, yeah. to have, a, have an home show. It's just proud to, to, to fly the flag and then it's not just me, like, you know, there's a lot of boys at the gym, there's a lot there's a lot of footballers, rugby players who are proud to be Welsh and not just Wales, but Abertillery as well, like, for such a small town to, to grow up here and, you know, to love living here, to, to put the town on the map a little bit so when, when people think about that lady they think about me hopefully in a couple of years time that, that, that would mean a lot as well it's, yeah it's I'm proud proud of where I come from and you know proud of my roots proud of my my heritage so it's uh, it's a big deal to me like I, I 
I don't like seeing um, the Welsh boys fight each other on, on even on the local shows. You know, like yeah. like when Jack and John fought, you had to fight each other. I didn't like I didn't like the fight yeah, of it. I, I have to say I'm in agreement. As well. Even I'm obviously not Welsh, but I was like, why do we have to do this? For, this yeah, is... for such a small like, can you consider how small Wales is and how big the divisions are? I just always think you know there's bound to be there's other there's bound to be other matches that can be made. Yeah. You know, maybe may all right as an amateur, you know, on a, on a smaller show, starting out fair enough, but we're on a world level now. We're on, yeah, I don't see why that needs to happen. Even on Cage Warriors and and stuff like that, I don't see why two Welsh boys need to go up against each other. Like, yeah. we 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 should all be spurring each other on and giving each other that push. There's no need for you know, there's there's plenty of others out there from England, yeah. Ireland, Scotland, and, yeah. and everywhere else that we can that we can be fighting with. What a fascinating visit we've had to Jack's family home. The collection of memorabilia and memories that his girlfriend and his family have helped collect will be great for Jack to look over and reminisce when he finally hangs up the gloves. But he's far from that point. We've seen how important it is for this Valley boy to represent himself, his family and his nation on the world stage. And it is great to see his support system. It's time now to visit another project that Jack and his dad have been working on their new top class training facility right here in Abertillery. And after that, Jack is going to teach me a few lessons on the mat. Right, here it is. This is, this is going to be ahead. Shaw MMA. What's it called? Oh, Shaw, Shaw MMA. Shaw MMA, Centre of Excellence. You'll see now when you go in. Look at the size of it. Show them a look around, right? Yeah. Sorry, right, look. Oh, really big. Take the mirror off. Oh, look at that. Who did that? Who did the artwork? Uh, this, well, one of our sponsors, Batch. He, uh, he, he just knows this guy. Um, this is, who's done a lot of um, graffiti and that for uh, big gyms down down Cardiff, and he, and he asked him, "Will he come and do it?" The old railway bridge yeah. onto <laughs> big gyms. That's very cool. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. So this, obviously, we've got a cage, big rolling area. Then down the bottom. How do How do you feel about? your name being invoked because you're you're on your own journey still yeah but this this changes a dynamic here yeah, a little it does. bit like at the minute i think lo locally for me the way i look at it is they see shaw and they, they're thinking of my old man anyway because you know everyone knows him as the i mean globally wise i want to just come on the scene so but everyone knows richard shaw as i used to go you know marshman's in the ufc and he's a guy yeah. in the gym so if i can if my name being in it you know helps pull a couple of randoms in because they see you know you're from the UFC or whatever then I might have like it's some you know I've, I've been training here all my life really at this gym um and it's some it's my second home so I I got no issue with like putting my name to it it doesn't yeah. it's something I'm quite proud of to be honest yeah. uh, to have a gym oh I sure. always want not my own gym but I've always liked the thought of show you know it should be like show and show MMA or, or show's gym so this, it's what I like about this as well so you get father and son tip like in, in building like, yeah, it, it, yeah, do you know no, what I mean? Yeah. Sure and son. And you'd be do, like maybe, you know, doing a bit of plastering or something like that. But it's now different and it's, it's the fight game. Yeah. And, uh, and what, yeah, what a lovely thing for both you and your dad to, to have. Yeah, and the progress, we, we'll see the, the well, current see, gym now. Like, but the, I mean, the, the current gym. I don't, have I been up the current gym? I've not, no. no I've so seen like, obviously it's, it's a video. It's a decent gym, but then when you, when you compare it... This is big. When this you compare it to this, it, it, it seems as if like we've been training in a tin shed for, for the last 10 yeah. years. No, it's not. It's a nice building. It's a nice setup. But then when you compare it to something like this, like this reminds me of, it's very similar to how Jackson's is set up. Yeah. Jackson's a little bit bigger. They've got two cages. Um, and they, but they haven't got as much of it. Like the domes would be up there rather than the, the, yes. the strength conditioning okay. area. But it, it's, it's very similar to how they've got it set up. That's, that was the look he wanted to go for. Like the... The American cell gym where you've got all under one roof, you know, you yeah. haven't got to travel to do your cardio or your S and C. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh So how's so how's the design work? Obviously this is what, a full size full 24 size? Foot, oh, is it's 24, 24 foot. Twenty four foot. It looks big though, doesn't it? Does, it looks yeah. big. This is twenty four foot, then we're gonna have um a sauna going by here. Sauna's going here. Sauna here, that'll that'll be the changing room, but that will be the entrance to the sauna there, so you'll get into the changing room from around that side. Okay. And then we got, we're going to have bag, bags here, this will all be matted as well. Okay. Ba bags, entrance to the cage, um, matted out down here then, with rest and more across the back and across the side here. Okay. And then we're going to have, I think just two little bikes with it for the boys to warm up on before they, they jump in and, and knock each other about. Shop front there, uh, we're going to, you know, just the reception area. Yeah. And we'll go up, I'll show you upstairs now. 
we've got um, we're lucky because we've got a lot of guys like like Carl, my wrestling coach. He's uh, he's a qualified physio. So, oh, really? um, so he's got a little physio so, room. So he's he's rubbing his hands together. So he's as well. he's hoping to drop <laughs> a couple of days in work so we can start start making a bit of extra money in there. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the girls' changing room. Okay. That's mine and my old man's office. It's the boss's office down the bottom, then. Lovely. Strategizing. Right, like the way down the bottom. And then this is the the S and C area, then. So all oh, this have got, got the this have got wow. to be all carpeted and everything, obviously. But um, so are you opening this up to like general public yeah. to use this yeah, as well? Yeah. Good idea. So be two set. Also, you can pay for the MMA, or, or if you want to just come use the gym, you can do that as well, or you, or you can use both. You've got a proper yeah. setup. There's a lot of kit here. We've got the town. A lot of investment. Plus, yeah, Smith machine, squat rack, four of these. How many runners we got? One, two, three. We've got another two runners to come up as well. Sorry, really? number one. So seven runners, two exercise bikes, four of these, four air dines. Jesus. Wait. This, <laughs> I mean, uh, this must be a room. Six room. rowers. We had low, we was lumping all this up yesterday. Me and, uh, me and Lee Batch and his brother, um, <laughs> down here. And luckily we got all of a forklift, but uh, it was, we had to lump all these that. up. It'd take a while this. to get this up. But yeah, it's, uh, it's coming together now, hopefully, well, a couple more weeks now. Just got to get it. Once the carpet is laid and all that's finished, we're good to go then. Is your dad losing, losing hair and sleep over this? Yeah, you, you, every time you come in here with him, you'll run it through the, the full plan. So this is going here, this is going here. He's like, we're going to have a rolling area there. And I'm like, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know you've told me 10 times. But uh, he's just excited to get it open. I think... Um, because me and Batch was down here yesterday, obviously putting stuff together and, and getting all this up here. But I think it was, it's killing him being in work, right. not knowing what's going on here. Yeah. So uh, we've got a couple, couple of loose hands to tie up, but we, we, we won't be long now. The, the vast majority of it's done. It's just the building work and the I've just realised though, this, so this is a big deal. You know, this, I'm sure your dad has been dreaming of putting a facility yeah, together oh, yeah. like this. But at the same time, you've just done your UFC debut. Perfect timing. So this is, well you say, I mean, I'm sure it is from like a promotional standpoint, but at the same time, the paperwork that he's signing for you on the one hand, for you, you know, the, the biggest outing of your professional fighting career. And then equally, I'm sure this is probably one of the biggest undertakings. Yeah, there's a lot of stress. Commercially that is, plus yeah. obviously, well, and you as well. Plus obviously um, the show this weekend as well, Cage Warriors, he's got yeah. five boys fighting on there. Five, um, right. It's the most pros you've had on a card for a long time, I think, because right. um, I think the last pro, the last, the last cage was car, we only had two or three of us fighting in pro, so now there's five. So right. he's got pressure with that. He's had my fight two weeks ago. He had, you know, he's had this in the back of his mind yeah. as well. So he's, um, <laughs> it's no wonder he's bald anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you must be excited as well, because you're looking at, these are all your toys. Yeah, you know, no. And down there as well. Well, I say usually, I, I train at the leisure centre most mornings, so all I usually use is a runner and, and a, um, and an exercise bike. I said I've got a couple more options now. I yeah, can, uh, we see you're going to be going up to 155, <laughs> 170, you know. I leave all them weights alone. I'll be making a bantamweight again. All right, so is your shrine going to now be like pillaged a little bit? Are you going to be bringing some of those things down here? So, so I said we can put certain, there's certain things obviously I want, like I'm, um, I'm in, I've just bought a bit of land, so I'm in the process of building a house. Oh, so, nice. Uh, what, again, around here? Around here, yeah. Just literally, literally a minute drive from where we are no now. Way. So I told my missus, she can do what she want, but I'm having a trophy room. I said, there's no if so, but I'm having a shrine room. So uh, there's certain things I'm going to keep for there, like the frame stuff and right. the belt, but um, I'm sure you'll find some room. And there's a few other guys now. He, uh, he won't give me no choice anyway. He'll just take it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what he's like. He'll just pop in the room and I'll grab grab I'll come mm-hmm. down here and the belt will be up. And I'll be like, where's that belt gone? <laughs> But yeah, it's, um, we're going to obviously have stuff all over the walls, like, like uh, pictures, and we're going to get um, some replicas of stuff down yeah. here. He's got yeah. his, um, his track suit that he wore for my walkout being framed okay. as well. So going to look the part as well as yeah. actually be the part of training yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So we look, nice. we'll have to come down again and see the, the I, finished article. I would love to. I would love to. But so you're, you're taking a first step on the property ladder as well. Yeah. And yeah. Buy, you're not just going to buy an apartment, you're going to build something uh, yeah. from scratch. Well, I got a bit of money saved. Obviously, I've Cage Warriors looked after me as well. So I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't go nowhere. So I just save all my money up. And I thought, let's, let's do something with it before I end up blowing it on a watch or a car or something stupid <laughs> I, that I don't need. So uh, yeah, I've got, got a couple of people um, who's advising, like good people who's, who's looking after me. I, I'm clueless of it all. Like, yeah, right. So my old man and a couple of his uh, contacts are helping me out with it. But yeah, so hopefully that won't be too long now. But that's, you, that's just something, that's just a little project in the back of my mind at the minute, obviously. Something to live in yeah. though. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. for me, yeah, yeah. Nice. So I'm just gonna like a two bed house, three bedroom, oh, three very bedroom, posh. Um, very posh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> three <laughs> bathrooms. Well, when, when, when we come and do part two to this, now we'll uh, we'll do like an MTV Cribs as love well, it. take you around the yeah, house. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take you up on that for sure. I love that as well. That's wicked. I see you've got the new style yeah, of UFC yeah. logo. He as said well. he'd keep Graham at me with uh, with the Cage Warriors logo. Right. He's got the old old one and the new one, then so yeah. So I'll have to redo it when I get a UFC belt. <laughs> have to spray paint the belt on. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Yeah, the, the, two, uh, the two versions. The walkout shorts, the tracksuit. <laughs> very nicely done. Very, looks like your dad's put on a bit of weight for the second one as well. Don't tell him <laughs> yeah. I said that, though. <laughs> yeah, it happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. <laughs> Oh, he, 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 I think he's like, he'll just, you know, stress. That's what you'll have, stress. <laughs> I'm not stress surprised. Eating. He's stress eating. There's a lot of stuff going on for you guys. <laughs> Very cool. Which one? I forgot. Because that looks like the Quang. sort of building where... Well, unless, it's, where? unless it's up here. I'm going to go the other side of this roundabout and see if it's just the other side. Like oh, look, there's Jack. Oh, there he is, isn't We'll follow him, that would be easy then. That's the right side, well. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So that's a little bit further on. Down at Teleri Combat now, this is uh, Jack Shaw's home. This is where he does all of his good work. This is where they've prepared him for all of those fights that got him to the UFC, those titles and defences at Cage Warriors as well. So uh, it's very different to the new setup, but still this is a, a pretty big place. I'm actually gonna go and train with Jack now as well. So uh, maybe I should go and warm up. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I've got to get the old man toolkit out to warm up the body, you see. I might not have the record, but I've got the list of injuries. So we need to get these uh, these pipe cleaners warmed up properly. Get a few, get a little oil in the joints. Just jump in. See how it goes down here in uh, Abitalera. Big Rick in the house. Mm. Ready? Ready? Ready, ready. Do you know what? I actually prefer it. At our gym, we have uh, we have the heaters on all through the summer, and if you're in the cage, you're that much higher to the to the heat. Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. Oh, this is, we had uh, before we like renovated a bit. We had a petition like 60 signatures running up for eating, and he just paid it off. He's like, no, nah, not happening. <laughs> 60, what, 60 for signatures for eating, up and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> He wasn't interested at all. I remember going out to um, Joanna Young Jacek's gym in yeah. Olsztyn in Poland. Yeah. And we went there in the winter. Was it freezing? It was, I've, the cold was, was through it? to the bones. <laughs> I'm like, I think after the training session, like three hours of training session, I felt like you were probably just warming up. You I know, tell you what, so Serena's cold though, where we just was. You know the first time we fought there, like went out to watch a couple of the fights, like the amateur fights, and it's freezing. Hey! Mighty Ben squeezing the shit out of me. I put these on this morning, I just had a look, I got a fucking Toy Story on it. <laughs> <laughs> they yours? Not the big Where the fuck did these come from? I'm gonna chill them off on me, you two got Toy Story socks. Look at them. You be proud of Woody. You've got to own Woody. Look at that. They fit lovely, I just don't know where they come from. <laughs> They're little teenies, are they? They're something like that. They're yours, you liar. I have them. What do you want to look at? What's the plan today? Lesson wise. Just gravel, open mat. And they're gonna feel the old man's strength. Get that on there. Have a layer for the deep eat. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger Bam right now. See the first man from the gym, from Wales, to get signed to the UFC, Jack Marshall. Very cool. Just love seeing the history in the gym. 
as much as like new gyms are very cool, it's always good to come to a gym where you can smell where the work's been taking place. You can see it. It's, uh, yeah, this, uh, this is a proper gym. Yeah, I remember that moving to the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're allowed to take the back. It's my guy, my little goal too. Yeah. 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 Oh, good luck. Uh -huh. He's sending all about himself. Yeah. How was that, John? Tough. Yeah, very good pressure. I felt like a lightweight guy. Like, I'm not one to talk, man. I haven't got a load of experience. I'm, I'm a novice. These guys are, are great, but I can feel the difference sometimes. Yeah, like he loves to work for the back. Very proficient. Make one wrong move. His uh, mount and got a very good way of baiting you to take you back. Fell into it a couple of times, but uh, it's good, man. He's going easy with me, so that's it's good experience, though. Oh. One thing we haven't spoken about was your debut. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, talk, let, let's talk about go, going into that then. What was your expectation and anticipation before you got to the fight of like, what you were going to be up against with, with fight week? I know you'd had a taste of it by coming down with Marshman, but it's different when you're the guy yeah. in the spotlight. It's, um, like I was, I was really, really well, I'm always well prepped for this one. With, you know, because it was the UFC debut and we, we, would, we worked so long to sort of, with cage warriors, like as, as we train now for those fights, I mean, but you're in the the routine and you know everything works. So, like I said, I had a little taste that it was like a new experience. So I wanted to make sure like my weight was low and and I was you know as fit as I could be, as strong as I could be going into fight week, just just in case because you know you know what it's like on fight week sometimes when especially when you're away from home, things don't always go how you anticipate. Yeah. You haven't got like you know in a different country, you haven't necessarily got access to the shops and the foods that you used yeah. to have in fight week so I mean there was anticipation for that but we just counteracted that by making sure I was overly prepared you know like my, my weight was as low as it, I think I was four pound lighter on the Tuesday this time than, than what I was on my oh, previous really? fight yeah so j just overcompensated for that but again it wasn't like it was a stress-free week like I'm, I'm I enjoy fight week like a lot of lot, lot of people apart from obviously they're not, not eating a great deal like yeah. I, I, I enjoy fight week I, what, what specifically because a lot of some people talk about the media some people talk about like the agony of counting down the hours but what do you like about it then? I just enjoy the like obviously we train so hard for, for like we do I do a 12 week camp so that's that three months is a long time to train yeah for one day so sometimes you know you'll be like six weeks out from a fight and you'll be thinking oh, I'm, I'm fucking knackered today or, or mm. I'll just 
sit on another six weeks of this, I've got another five weeks of this before I can wind down. Whereas with fight week, it's like, the, to me, it's the the thing you've worked so hard for for so long is at the end of the week, you know, it's just mm. the end is in sight then. And, and not, the, not in the sense of like, oh, the end's in sight, I can't wait to get over. It's yeah. like this thing I've trained so hard for and been waiting for, it, it's got closer. And, but, you know, it, it seems like it's taken forever. Whereas you get to the Monday of fight week and it's just, it's literally, it's five days, you know, by the time yeah. you travel out there on the Tuesday. By the time we settled then it was Tuesday night, so it was Wednesday, Thursday. By Friday, so all systems go then with the weigh-ins mm. and stuff like that. So I just enjoy the thought of finally on Saturday we, we get to we get to do what we train to do. Yeah. You know, we're some some people like you said, uh, counting down the hours to the way. It is that is a tough part. You know, I'd be lying if I said I didn't find it tough because it, yeah. it is meant it's more mentally tough than physically tough. The, the yeah. weighing is to me is you know making weight and and all that that's mentally tougher than having to go out and, and actually fight so really? yeah I, I, like not not i struggle making weight but obviously the the no food and the mm. no drink for a couple of hours that's worse to me mentally to think about that to yeah. think about doing that and cutting weight <laughs> in the sauna it hurts me more mentally than the thought of of, of the cage door lock and, and, and going at it so you're bouncing fists and yeah like that's, that's something i've always done like i've grown up sparring training competing so that that's just second nature to me i love doing that but uh, it's, it's the the, the weight cut sort of thing is, is the is the worst part of the week then. But again, it's it's all about being mentally strong. It is short lived. Yeah. It's a couple of hours. Once that's done and you get yeah. you I look I look once that's done out the way I, it's nothing but excitement then and and you know excitement and good anticipation, counting down the hours end of the fight for you know, here we go, let's yeah. let's, let's get in there and let's get it done. Was there was there a moment that you hadn't realised was going to be quite as cool as it was maybe dur during fight week before again just before we even talk about the fight was there something that surprised you or you were, like thought was a really good different experience the, the weigh-ins was the, the the public weigh-ins obviously was was um was a good buzz like we obviously with cage warriors and the amateur fights although you got a little bit of a crowd you sort of where you drained on the scale and because with cage wise you, you weigh in and do you stay off at the same time so it's not yeah. like an early weigh in and a, and a public weigh in so you just can't wait to get off the scale do the yeah. stay off and have a drink whereas this one weighing in first thing in the morning for me was ideal you know plant i was by the public weighing in i was full of energy yeah and then to have a big crowd day as well just just for the weigh in and, and there was good, good food welsh in the crowd made a bit yeah. of noise as well so to have them there it sort of give you that little adrenaline Adrenaline kick. You felt that kick in, even yeah. though the fight was until tomorrow. Is usually that doesn't kick in until the, the walk out for the actual fight. Whereas yeah. this, this time I had a little a little taster for it on the Friday, yeah. which made nice. made me that a little bit more excited. Then for Saturday, I think well that that was good. So what was tomorrow going to be like? Yeah. So it's um it, it, it that, that was exciting and a, a nice little buzz. I was I seen um Dana White. Uh, <laughs> done a little video before yeah. the fight and give me a little mention. The best that. young prospect yeah, the best out of the UK. So, I was happy with that again. That was the Friday night we seen that. So we was about what, what does that what does that make you feel? Because Dana is so instrumental in our sport, you know, not just the UFC. So to have that kind of um, accolade, I guess that yeah. it, it was um, again. I, I sort of uh, rung, rung my missus and like for a fight, and it was like it just doesn't. It feels like, it felt like a bit of a dream. It was like it doesn't. It's not normal that you know we've I've known. The name Dana White for 10, 15 years from mm. watching the UFC and being a fan. Sounds like he's known so, you for more than 15 minutes. So it's, it's not, it's not like it doesn't feel normal or real. That <laughs> I'm watching a video and he's like, "We got Jack Shaw, you're the the artist or the youngest prospect coming out of the UK." So it, it was a bit. Uh, I was just looking. I was like, "This," <laughs> just trying to take it in. It wasn't registering, and then, and then I seen after the fight, he, he tweeted out a picture of me as well warming up. So after the fight, I was like, "Get on that straight away." I was like, "Dana." <laughs> follow me but he I don't follow me yet so but I'll keep pressing him till he does but yeah that was surreal as well so little things like that I found like through the fight week definitely buzz, like give me that little buzz before the fight whereas yeah I'm used to just getting in the zone and getting that buzz from the walk out on fight night I had a couple of little instances through the week like seeing the kit and the gloves as well I'll, again I give you a little boost to, yeah to just just push on a little bit harder so it, it was uh, a couple of little things through the week that uh, was, was different to what I'm used to you know and tell us what you're like in the in the locker room. What what's going on between you and the team? Uh, to be honest, this time it was a lot different to, to what usually. You know, my last couple of fights I've been on late. Even Good since point. I, I think my every fight I've had with Cage Warriors has been on the main card. So you're talking nine o'clock onwards. Whereas this time I was scheduled to fight at five, and that's why I kept saying it reminded me of being an amateur where you just turn up, wrap your hands, warm up, and before yeah. you know it, you're walking out. And, and yeah. it felt exactly the same. I think we got to the. 
we got to the venue quarter past three so obviously we was fighting at five so I had to do a USADA test um, get my hands wrapped by the time I did that and, um, and and got changed it was it was something like 50 minutes to the fight so it was right warm up so and now that you know we don't warm up we just do a, a little bit of intense stuff to get the sweat up and take over then so it was, it was good hard pads with Gary and then moving on with Carl um, just 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 stuff like the little trigger points that we worked in the camp you know for the for the game plan like we worked him switching stances and, and doing certain things when he switched stances so he was just moving around like, like was Carl had switched stance and he'd be right this is the that's your trigger point this is what we act on on there and yeah he was barking instructions then from the from the from the side he was warming up but I enjoyed the warm-up it, it felt a lot better to be honest and because usually I'm in the venue f for hours before before mm. I thought was this one it was before I knew it I was warming right right to make the walk the, the warm-up was short but it was nice and intense the point where I was warm I, I was firing on all cylinders I felt probably you know the sharpest I felt walking out to a fight just yeah. because the warm up was we didn't have time to to think about it really we just had to get in there and get on with it yeah. and, that, and that was nice so it, I'm looking forward to that obviously happening in every fight now rather than having to hang about the venue for, mm. for hours at a time and what about the mood some people they like it quiet some people music some people want to take themselves in to the back and stare in the mirror and I don't know talk to themselves a little bit but what's do you have a routine is there any not superstitions, but is there stuff that you can cons consistently do which is helping you get ready? I just I like it to be just intense. I don't like any music. I don't like um, so it's quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. I, I don't like people. I don't like people talking shit to me then before the fight. Like he, my dad knows Carl, and they know what to say at the right times. They you know they don't. They're not overfeeding me. So it's not like let's go champ. No, none of that. None of that. <laughs> There's no like they, they're not overfeeding me with information. They're not. They're not in my ear constantly. They, they they know that I'm prepped and, and they know that I yeah. know what I gotta do. So it's just little fire points. Same as in the fight when when they're cornering in the fight a lot. You listen to the corner. It's, it's just short and concise. It's not yeah. great corner. It's not everyone talking at once and f feeding you stuff that you don't necessarily need. You know stuff that you already know. Yeah. So yeah. it's the same in the changing room. It's it's just a couple of words here and there, keep keeping me sharp. Mm. You know l little bits of positive reinforcement. But again, I just like it quiet and intense. I just like to be left to work, work myself up on my own and I don't need people shouting at me and you know telling me you're gonna you're gonna smash him and he's not on your level yeah. I don't need none of that I d yeah. he don't want to he don't want to know he, I don't need none of that I, I yeah. know how to get myself worked up in my own head and they they know they know when I'm in the zone and they they, they know when I'm right to, to to go and and fight her off so the fact that I got three cornermen that I've been working with now probably for well obviously my dad all my life and Carl and Gary the last three years consistently the fact they know me just as well as I know me and mm. I know them just as well as they know me so they, they know what what the mood is and, and they know exactly what, what needs to be said and when needs to be said they know not to uh, not to change the routine yeah and that walk out first walk out for the UFC <laughs> was it everything that you thought it would be I mean did you do you even remember it yeah it, obviously like I haven't walked out I haven't walked out behind Marshman and I sort of it was a little bit how I pictured it like I right. expected when I walked out to see more like the arena be it was as, as big as I knew it was going to be a lot bigger than what I was used to. So when I walked out and seen like the three tiers, it was fairly full in there, even though it was the first fight. It was how I expected it. It was, um, it was obviously, I was, I was surprised if anything, how many people was in there, like being first fight on. Yeah. I know in America a lot of the time, it doesn't fill up. I love about it doesn't European fill up till the main card. So I was expecting to walk up and it'd just be the boys who bought tickets to be in there. So <laughs> I thought it'd be like being in the ice arena, but it was full. And um, the, the, the crowd, the crowd were into it as well. Like you could tell they were MMA fans, not not just there to watch their friend yeah, because yeah. I noticed like what, even though the adrenaline was fine doing the fight I noticed I'd land a good shot or kick you'd do the crowd go up or you'd mm. land a good take down you'd do the crowd react to it where sometimes when I, when I fight in the ice arena usually as you know I love the atmosphere and everything but they're just mental for the full fight it's just it's just <laughs> it's a constant just noise, noise. Yeah. Whereas this one it was noisy from my little corner but then something there good had happened you'd have a transition yeah. and there'd be an appreciation for it so I, I did click on that in the fight as well yeah and uh, a good dance partner, I think, for your first fight. You know, a, a guy that's with experience and tough all rounder, but really and truly, you know, you, you got into your flow early, and mm. and uh, you know, I think you put on a sterling performance. What after going back and talking with the team, what was your reflection on the fight? It was um, we, we just we had a game plan going. Like I say a game plan, like we had like again trigger points going in, and certain it's not so much a game plan. It's we. We big believers in fighting off instincts and letting your instincts take over. But we'd we drilled a lot of of these instincts into me for this fight, and, and I just let him. You know, I, I brought him out nice and early. He, he fought exactly how I thought he would. The only thing he did that 
surprised me a little bit was he, he pushed forward a little bit more. I thought he, would go, he was going to stay on the back foot and, and force me to chase him. But I think the fact that he started pressing just, just got to show off more of my skill because mm. I could box him on the back foot a bit. You know, I, I kept him at bay with the kicks and then it opened up my entries then. But um, again, it was not, not, not surprised at how easy I dealt with him. But I watched him fight... Um, Marlon Vera yeah. on, on short notice as well. Great opponent, and he's, I think he's top five or six. Yeah. And I know he got subbed in the second round, but he looked good in the first round. Yeah. He could have, could argue, he pinched the first round. So I thought, you know, he's not. I knew he was, was no mug going in. I knew he was going to come to spoil the show, and mm. I knew he was going to be tough. But I just got into my groove early, and if I, if I can get firing off early like that, you know, we used to f- our last couple of fights have been five rounders. So yeah. I knew with a three round, I'd have to start and a little bit quicker, find find my groove a little bit quicker, and yeah. Thankfully, we did that nice and early, and it, it was just a matter of letting the instincts take over then, and, and just following the, the plan. You've got a good blend in, in your career, actually, of like early finishes, finishes late. Yeah. You know, well, that like was my uh, that's my third third round finish in a row. So I, yeah, I, uh, I don't expect that the odds will probably be won't be the best. I'll <laughs> third round finish in the next fight, but uh, yeah, I think I've had four, four or five third round finishes now. So why do you think that is? It's just my style, I think. Like whereas couple of years go, like going back to my early early days as a pro I think I was known for <clears throat> coming out and, and not being frantic but I would come out hard and fast and it would be mm. a matter of get him down and let's get him out of there whereas now it's like I know cardio wise I can go all day if I, I can go all day and I can go fast and hard for five rounds mm. if I go so especially going into a three round fight I, I know that I've got no sort of panic about gassing out because I know the way I train that, that I'm, I, I can push hard for those three rounds I know I can recover quick in the minute rest. These are all things we prep for. So I think my style has sort of changed now to just, rather than going out and, and trying to force the finish, just, just taking the fight as it comes. And I know if I can get my game going with my, my grappling and my rest and my pressure, that there's not many people at the weight that will be able to continuously fight off our pressure without giving up a finish or, or giving up a bad position. And, and that's not being cocky. That's just, I, I just know the pressure I bring. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sparring boys in the gym where lightweights and, and featherweights and welterweights and I know if I can get my game going on them from mm. top position they are struggling to find the way out so I know if I can put that same pressure on guys my own weight and my own size then the, the finish will come eventually so I think I'm getting these late finishes I'm not rushing no more I'm not forcing finishes I'm just taking them when they come yeah has there been any fighters in the UFC or perhaps just just generally in, in mixed martial arts who not necessarily modeled your style on but are there people that fight the way that you enjoy fighting that you know, you've now. Yeah. Well, obviously, Khabib is the like. If you look at the the modern the modern era guys, then Khabib obviously his style is just pressure, constant pressure. And did you spotted him early on? And his and his yeah, style. Then? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. I've been a fan. We've been a fan of him since since um, since the first fight or well, the second fight. We had some like nineteen. He, he took the take down. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've been, I'm a big fan of him. And obviously, looking like at the big GSP is probably someone like and GSP and Frank. Yeah, yeah. You know, they can. They are two guys that can can dictate the fight. I find so they can strike if they want to strike. Mm. Frank Edgar, you know, look, last couple of years he, he's come into the tail end, but, but GSP more so. You know, he would fight the top level wrestler, so he would just box with him for five mm. rounds. And then if he decides, well, I'll take him out to pinch the round, he could do that. Or if he was fighting an elite striker, then he'd come out and wrestle and grapple. Mm. You know, if, he, if he's fighting a good wrestler, he'd put him on their back and and make him uncomfortable. So, so I would find watching him, he'd always tend to put people in positions where. They didn't want to be, and that that's sort of something I've always wanted to do. Like I've always wanted to be the guy where, when you sign to fight me, you've got to look at look at it realistically and think, well, there's no real weak areas. Yeah. All right, he might be a little bit better you than he is you, or this might be a little bit stronger. But as a as a whole, you know, you can't look at me and say, oh, well, we'll just take him down because he's just a strike guy, or you can't just say, right, we'll keep you on the feet because he's just a wrestler. Mm-hmm. I've shown our last couple of fights that wherever you want to go, I'm I'm comfortable everywhere. And before I forget to ask the question then, because there's rumours circling, mm-hmm. GSP or, or Habib? <laughs> don't put me in that position. <laughs> I don't know. he makes it down? There's rumours that he's yeah. done a test cut or something. I've heard he, i see online that apparently he did a test cut or, or uh, got relatively close. Yeah. I think, I don't know, maybe maybe a couple of years ago I would, I would go right. GSP, but I just watch Khabib when he gets going. I just think, I just don't see anyone, like, anyone being able to stop the takedown yeah. I mean I think Ferguson is in with half a shout because of his, his, his ground game off his back mm-hmm. but as good as George is on the floor I think he hasn't got that style to turn it into a you know a wiry jiu-jitsu match whereas yeah. 
Tony can, could, could turn it into that a little bit. But I, I think Khabib, especially if Georgia got a couple of weight down as well, if mm. he gets if he gets his game going, it's, it's just a matter of time. I think watching your game, one thing that's uh, that really sticks out for me is is the way that you chain it together, the, the way that yeah. the, the bits in between. Because there are a lot of fighters out there that have that like, excellent striking and excellent wrestling, and, and then they can submit as well. But sometimes they, there's gaps there, and they're they're looking for openings. But you can really lead the dance with that, and I think that's why you meth- you can methodically break someone down. And after having spent some time on the mat here, I, I kind of <laughs> felt that from a lot of people. Like, step by step yeah. by step and no one's in a hurry and they're very aware of what's going on and I think that style has come through and is that something that people have said to you you've been to Jackson's did they comment on your ability to, to yeah, put it together yeah it was um, I think where it comes from is obviously like being brought up in MMA rather than being brought up in boxing or jiu-jitsu well, you did, and you then did jumping over traditional ju- Japanese yeah, jiu-jitsu yeah I, I did I did do like kickboxing and, and traditional jiu-jitsu but at the same time Whenever I've done traditional jiu-jitsu, we would always sort of start on the feet and or, right. or would involve strikes. And, you know, whenever I was just doing the kickboxing, even as kids, we were still doing a little bit of... A lot, a lot of good at the time. We were still doing a bit of wrestling and right. grappling. So, like... And I've been in an MMA gym since I was 12. So, I, you know, I, it's not <laughs> like... Crazy. It's not like I was, uh, like I said, a kickboxer then. Yeah. Who at 18 has decided, right, let's good learn point. a ground yeah. game. Or vice versa. It's not like yeah. I was a, a wrestler or who at 18 thought, right, let's learn a bit of striking and go into MMA. I've, I've been brought up in a bit like Rory McDonald then they always said about him he he was never like yeah, a specialist who came in. Right? He was the first guy who was has just trained in MMA all his life and so I think that's just why I transition yeah so fluidly into it because everything we do up here is MMA based. Like our striking mm. class, how we got an elite Thai coach, but even even him him now having been here a year, he's starting to say, right, well if there's MMA do this. Yeah. It's the same about Jiu Jitsu, although we're training in the gi and, and in the no gi it's all, for the most part, it's all the, to, to transition into MMA. Yeah. Same about wrestling, Carl does a wrestling class. It's not, um, it's not a freestyle or Greco class, it's a, it's a wrestling class for MMA. For MMA. Yeah. So everything we do all links in together. Even mm. Although we got different coaches doing the striking, the wrestling, the grappling, they all link into one, which is, is why. You see it, see it with a lot of old boys, you know, like I, I'm the, I'm the I, they just all seen it with me because I'm on, all the cameras on me but as, as we go through the years now there's a lot of younger kids coming through who are the same as me been in this gym since they were 10 11 years yeah. old That's we're gonna be exactly scary. the same yeah so yeah. if you think i'm good at it give, give some of these kids <laughs> come back in 10 years when some of these kids are 21 and see uh yeah. see how they're doing there's a 13 year old that uh Yohan, will have night- thomas keep i'm gonna have nightmares about his, that kid yeah. for a couple of weeks i remember, think now. remember Yohan's name because he's uh his dad's been about you as really good grappler and right you can just you can just tell with some kids that they they got it and, and that yeah. they 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 want it sort of speak then they want to yeah you, you can just see got got the fire in him and if you can keep keep that sort of if you can keep his head race up for the next for the tough years now when he's yeah 16 17 18 and all his friends are going out if he can keep strong sort mm. of like i did and continue with the training and competing and he'll uh he'll be a force to be reckoned with in yeah. a couple of years time. no doubt no doubt so just capping off the fight then so you know you get the win What's that feeling like? First win in the UFC, 12-week camp, a lot of anticipation, especially not just Wales, but I think, I think you, Europe, you know, as Dana White's talking your name yeah. and, and you get that win. I'm sure as relaxed as you are, there's, there's pressure there, which you've got to handle. So what was that like? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there is pressure, obviously, like from the outside looking in with Dana talking about me and the sort of the all of Wales is behind me is... The, the whole gym wants me to do well, and 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 all of that. Larry he's probably watching, but I I just honest like and honestly say I just I don't think about it. I I don't let it get to me. It's it's not me. You can see it in my face. It's not me putting on this act of oh I don't get nervous. Yeah. And I'm not scared to go in it. It's it's gen. I'm yeah. being genuine. I don't I so don't what, feel so the pressure. So what does the win feel like? Then? So it's it's a because it's obviously not. It's like a relief then. So the win is a relief in the sense of all the training and and all the work I've put in and the coaches have put in and. You know, putting all my family and friends who probably not seeing me for twelve weeks, and me giving them attitude who tight and put like all that is when I win, it feels as if like it was worth it now. Yeah, because so you do, you everyone gets it. You get to certain stages in the camp, and you think, oh, it's, they said all this crap out to be, but <laughs> you get that win, and and then it just feels like it's just a relief, it's a weight off the shoulders that it's all worth it. Rather, mm. it's not. I don't think. Oh well. Thank God, because Dana have mentioned me now, and I look, I look, yeah, I look yeah, a yeah, fool. Really or, yeah, or everyone yeah. in town have watched me, and I've lost. It would never be that. It would just, 
it would just be that I've done my coaches justice, I've done the team justice, yeah. done my friends and family, and I've done myself justice. It's, yeah. a, it's a relief for me personally then, rather than a relief that, oh, thank God, that, you know, it's not a matter of, I'm, yes, I've done it, everyone's going to be proud, and yeah. people are not going to think, oh, unlucky, you know, it's, it's just I've done it, and I'm happy for me and, and the people around me. And you, one thing that we spoke about during a week, uh, during fight week was the fact that you'd actually turned down the, the UFC or, or you know your management your dad had so what was it the third time of, of asking that you actually or was it the fourth time that you actually you did it so again all of those decisions I guess yeah for the team they were the right moves I think it was, was it the third time well third, third stroke fourth it was we got offered when I was three and all um, but it would have been too much too like looking at the time obviously I wanted to jump at it but look, looking back now I would have been in and out like that so I was a kid still at the time you know right. I was and if I fought me now from then it wouldn't last a minute so right it was the right choice um then back last year they they spoke to Graham about a possible short notice fight but my hand was broke uh, oh, I just come back from breaking my hand so I, I wouldn't have been able to to jump in on, on two weeks notice anyway and then I think Graham said Shelby mentioned it to him at UFC London. Yeah. But I was contracted to fight Malone, so okay. we, want, we wanted to get that one done. Um, and it's then, a big fight as well. Yeah. So I, I was I was originally contracted for for two more fights with Cage Warriors. Like I'd signed a fight fight deal. I'd done three fights, but after beating Malone, there was realistically there was there was nothing left. It, it was a matter of you know who do I fight now without taking a backward step or right. who, who, you know. Who, it's all well and good bringing some random guy in, but then is the motivation going to be the same? Yeah. Am I going to push myself the same? So, Graham agreed with us. It was just a matter of, you know, getting sort of cage warriors and the, the top guys at, at, at the, the business end to, to yeah. release me. Well, and, and it's big because you were the face of the promotion. Well, that's so. it. They, 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 they've obviously, they've took, they took a risk, I suppose, on, on releasing me because they, obviously I used to sell the Welsh show out there yeah. and the Welsh show was all based around me being the main event. Yeah. And in their head, they probably thought, We've got another two shows now before we go worry about building yeah, another star. Yeah. So they had to move that process on a little bit quicker. But I think all in all, they they knew it was they they knew the same as we knew that uh, yeah. that, that we had to um, we had to move on. It was a matter of you know I took out the Malone and Eck and they all again people wrote me off against a pair of them and I made you know made made those fights look easy in the sense I dominated. You know, for the full three rounds, I, I didn't look. You know, I looked a class above them about being disrespectful, and they're two top level guys. You know, they mm. were ranked at the yeah. time. Heck and Dio was ranked two, and I think Malone was ranked three. So below me in the rankings, they're the next two best guys. Yeah. You put them in against a lot of the division, they're gonna look as good against the rest of the division as I did against them. So yeah, yeah. it was it was time to move on and, and and just seek bigger challenges. I think and and prove that I can do it in Europe. So it's proven I can do it on the world stage as well. Yeah. Next step, then. I mean. You look like you're in good shape. I mean, are you in a hurry to get back or step by step? I know that I, I can already tell that you're not going to be like giving me a list of names perhaps, <laughs> but you know, j just fantasy thinking, you know, when are you coming back? Or is there a location that you'd like to visit? Yeah, I think I, ideally, obviously we've got the, the gym opening up now. So I ideally would be in the new year now. Okay. Um, again, I'm one of these as well. I'm, I'm still young. I'm only 24. So for me to continue to look as good as I am I've got to be getting better between fights I can't afford to be stood still then I can't afford you see so many guys get to the UFC with a great skill set and but that's it mm. I need to keep getting better I need to be improving in all areas I need to be adding new tools so I do like a bit of time between fights to you know have a month or two just working on getting better you know yeah. I'm ne never really out of shape I'm always in the gym t twice a day three times a day anyway so yeah it's, it's not a matter of I want time off the to not live this life, this lifestyle no more. This is how I live anyway. But it's a matter of just time off to get a little bit better. Get our new gym up and running. You know, London, I know they they usually come to London and they march time. So chuck me on on the London card nice. against anyone, anyone in the division from a rank above me to, to whoever. Chuck yeah. me in against anyone and I'll, uh, I'll I'll win or lose. I'll come for on a show. You you know you won't. You won't see no one in the division whitewash me, put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I haven't asked, what did you do to celebrate? Did you <laughs> did you give us, Did you buy yourself a little gift? Did you go out special? Because I saw you guys in the bar after, you and your dad. I haven't seen smiles like that across your faces. I mean, I've seen you since you were <laughs> super young, maybe in the background, but I've known your dad a little while now, and he was pleased as punch. And obviously, you know, of course we know why. 
<laughs> but we, how did that, how did the celebrations go? We didn't have time to celebrate really on the night. We was flying home six a.m. the next morning. <laughs> the UFC tucked us up with a flight, so uh, and you tucked yourselves in. <laughs> yeah, so bed. they. The old, the old, the old boys went to bed. I stayed up on my phone, checking, checking all my notifications all night. Um, oh, you did that, do you? Yeah, but uh, no, I, I, I mean, I celebrated this weekend. Now, so the week after, me, me and a couple of my mates went to Cardiff. Went, went out the uh, midweek with my girlfriend to Cardiff as well. For Dancing some, for shoes some food. on. <laughs> I don't want yeah. that, but uh, <laughs> we had, we had a good night. But I'm not. I don't like. I don't really celebrate a lot. Like to me, celebrating is. Eat, eating a bit of junk food and, uh, and drinking some coke. <laughs> that's uh, that's all I do. I don't. Uh, I'm not a big party guy, but um, I, I bought myself a couple of little treats. Um, yeah, good for you. Pay, pay a new pair of gloves and a new bike. So <laughs> I'm happy with that now. Right. Wait on our bonus to come and always spend it on the house. I'll Bi- have you or something. Bicycle or motorbike? No, a bicycle. You'll never, never, never let me get a motorbike. No. Death traps. So yeah, I'll be. Well, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be giving you a call if you got one of those. He's on edge home. enough, my old man. Uh, with me on his on his new bicycle, let, let, let alone a motorbike. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Got your helmet on. <laughs> with the with the with the hills you got down here, you can crack up a good forty mile an hour just out your front door. I think. <laughs> So I'm just back from spending a great day with Jack Shaw. Really got to know the man behind the fighter, if you like, from going into the family home and just seeing his treasure trove of medals and achievements that he has. And I I really liked the book that he had where he'd closed the chapter on his Cage Warriors journey. And now he's looking to open a new one for his UFC journey, which is very exciting indeed. I truly believe that under the guidance of his dad, funnily enough, that he's had one of the best managed careers that I've seen in in this part of the world, from a a very distinguished amateur upbringing to go to the IMFs and then take on his professional career as well, ending up with the Cage Warriors belt, title defences, knocking back the UFC multiple occasions as we discovered, and now he is officially a bantamweight in the UFC division in the win column as well. Been a fascinating day, great to train with some of his teammates as well. That team certainly have a very strong mixed martial arts style. My body hurts greatly from the time that I spent down there, but it it really was a, a very privileged position to come down and see Jack at this stage where so many things are in transition in a positive way from where he has closed that chapter as we saw, where he has gone from the gym where we were training and they're just moments away, weeks away from opening up this fantastic new facility, which is gonna just be so good for that team. And Jack particularly, we spoke about the cage that they have there and how he's never really even trained in a cage. Think about that, the way that he fights, never really trained in the environment that he competes in, fascinates me. So there's so much growth that we're gonna see from a man who I think told us he was maybe 25 years young. So it's exciting times. For me, as someone involved uh, with the UFC, I'm excited to see him there. And Dana White's picked up on it. I do believe that we truly do have one of the hottest prospects in the UK who can follow in the great footsteps of all of those Welsh sports stars that he spoke about. Very proud Welshman, and they should be proud to have him. Looking forward to seeing the next moves from Jack Tankshaw.